Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston. Today we are back for episode 43 of the Georgia State Dynasty on NCAA Football 14 on the PlayStation 3. And today we are back for a Week 11 showdown against New Mexico State, one of the teams kind of in the bottom of the barrel, though, of the Sun Belt Division. But don't let that fool you. It's not a conference, I should say, because this will prove to be a very tough game. But as you can see, take a look at the Sun Belt standings right here. We are currently at the top, and a win here today clinches us a spot in the conference championship. That is a goal that I set out at the beginning of the year that I wanted to do, and it would be great to accomplish that. One week ahead of our showdown against South Alabama, the biggest rivalry in the conference. But nonetheless, so Burns and I decided that our defenses were a little too good. Um, both of them are rated pretty low, and both of them are putting up pretty good numbers. So we decided we would raise the defensive sliders because the defensive sliders were a bit, a little bit lower than what the offensive sliders were um, for uh, throughout the duration of this dynasty so far. So we decided to raise them up. Now they're equal to the offensive sliders. Uh, in terms of like difficulty or whatever and it would show you're gonna see this game it's gonna be a lot tougher than you might expect based off of previous games but nonetheless offense we're still rolling Ben McLean to the right side fires it to Paul Walker on the corner route and he makes an 18 yard reception right there so now later in the drive it's gonna be a shotgun set once again three wide one tight end McLean takes a deep drop back scrambles to the left and this is something McLean has done pretty well in recent games is scramble and kind of avoid pressure and not take sacks he's learned to do that throughout the year but that would be incomplete so fourth and 12 coming up we're gonna bring out our field goal unit and that's gonna be a kick up and good I believe that was about 48 or 49 yards will Lutz or will Lutz continues to be if one of the if not the best kicker in the nation he has really proven to be something special for us this year but you can see Ole Miss Falls there that was the number eight team in the country here comes New Mexico State though and Marquette Washington getting things started for New Mexico State the Lobos get a 29 yard carry right there from their star halfback Marquette Washington and now they're going deep and he's got a man and I don't know what my defensive back was doing Miles Morris what are you doing Adam Shapiro is just wide open for no reason this was Really frustrating. I don't know what this was about, but my secondary does this all the time, and I don't know why because we have a couple like 70 overalls, and I don't know if it's an awareness thing or oh, shaking my head. But nonetheless, we're gonna skip ahead here to the ensuing kickoff. It's a 7-3 ball game. Justin Wagner to the outside across the 30, 35, and he actually runs out of bounds upon accident right there. But it's a 32-yard kick return, and that gives us pretty decent field position. So first and 10, we're coming out in a read option. It's going to be a keeper for Ben McLean up the middle, and he will pick up about 7 yards on the hand or the carry right there. And now later in the play on 2nd and 3, Blake Gardner up the middle. He's going to barrel his way up for the first down. We'll give him 6 yards on the play and a new set of downs as the drive continues for the Georgia State Panthers. Now, here we go. Next play of the drive. It's going to be a handoff to Kylie Neal right up the middle of the pistol formation. And Neal is going to pick up 13 yards, doing what he does best, picking up those 10 to 15-yard carries, carrying this offense so far this year. He has been one of the best players in the nation at this point. But there we go. A nice throw to Justin Wagner, and that is going to be a 10-yard reception for the sophomore standout wide receiver. Third and three handoff to Kylie Neal, and Neal will pick up the first down, doing what he does best. Just picking up those yards, what he needs. He always seems to get so many first downs. Very aware of where the pylon is, or where the first down marker is, I should say. Also aware of where the pylon is from when he's close to the end zone. But a six-yard pickup for Neil once again now. Second and four later in the drive. First and ten. McLean going to drop back scramble to the right side. He's going to take it himself, and he will run out of bounds and pick up seven yards before he does that. That's going to set up second and three. Now on the next play, 218 left to play in the first quarter. Hand to Neil right up the middle for the score. It's a four-yard touchdown, and Georgia State retakes the lead 10 to seven here in the Georgia Dome. And you can take a look at Kylie Neal celebrating with his teammates. Kylie Neal, as I said, one of the best running backs in the nation. Has been absolutely phenomenal for us this year. Especially, you know, kind of the second half. Especially after Jeremy Johnson went out. We really started to rely more on the run. And he has stepped it up. He's actually, if you guys have been following uh, South Alabama's, or Burns' South Alabama series. And you've been noticing how good Jay Jones has been. Well, actually, after this week, Kylie Neal and Jay Jones had the exact same amount of rushing yards after this. So that gives you some perspective if you've been watching. Uh, Burns to South Alabama series, but there's Mark at Washington for I believe that was a 13-yard gainer And now another hand off to Mark at Washington to the outside Peterson finally chases him down Joseph Peterson has really stepped up recently as a, uh, a really good team tackler Pretty decent in coverage, but uh, definitely much better in the run, but here we go great coverage except Tony Lo London finally finds Adam Shapiro as Shapiro ran a corner out there and then he cut back to the inside Finally avoided our coverage. We had great coverage all around. And then here we go. I'm just like, I don't know what to do at this point to stop these guys. They are running all over me, throwing all over me. Tony London, his second passing touchdown of the game. 
that's one is to Nathan Williams. That, I believe, is a much shorter one. But nonetheless, we get the ball back. Hand off to Kylie Neal on the read option. And Neal is going to pick up a nice 12 or so yard chunk. That is going to set up a new first down for Georgia State. Another inside handoff to Kylie Neal, who picks up some nice blocks. And I think the best thing about those type of runs with the uh, out of the shotgun set is we get a lot of good second level blockers, which allows Neal to pick up gains of 10 plus to, to around 15 yards or so. Here he just does a good job of avoiding the, some of the second level tacklers. And it's going to be an 11 yard gainer. And now here we go. That's a play action. Doing the little play action here, trying to use the run to set it up. McLean, no one open, so he's going to take off on his own. And once again, McLean looking a little bit better on the ground than he had in previous games. It looks like he's kind of a, emerged a little bit as, as a potential run threat, but I wouldn't count on it too much. McLean scrambling to the right side. Finally fires it deep, and that is incomplete. Second and ten coming up, but Ben McLean is down on the plane. He's going to end up getting hurt, so we're going to have to bring in Clay Chastain. A guy who came in and started a couple games for us last year, and he did okay in them. I think doing two and one in his starts. Rufus Warren is there for the eight-yard pickup, and you can see Clay Chastain. I believe he's a he's actually he's been on the team for all all three years now, so he's either a junior or senior. They could have brought in Gavin Edwards, but uh, Chastain was doing fine, and I know he played fine for us last year, so. I just decided to roll with him, and that's a three-yard touchdown for Kyler Neal, and we retake the lead 17-14, to and what is looking like a sh potential shootout at this point, as it has been back and forth, back and forth on offense all game long. But here comes New Mexico State with three minutes left. They're going to try and get put up one, one more score and try to retake this lead before going into the half. But here we go. First and, or third and ten, Tony London is going to drop back. He feels the pressure, breaks a tackle, fires it to the right side, and Marquette Washington frees himself of the coverage. He will pick up the 14-yard pickup, and now second and five shotgun. So once again, four wide, London dropping back, sees no one. He's going to take off, and he's got some room to run. He'll pick up the first down and a seven-yard gainer, and the drive will continue for New Mexico State. Now here we go, shotgun. So once again, London avoiding the rush, steps up in the pocket, and he will scramble, and that will be a nine-yard gainer for... Tony London now shotgun set once again on the next play London to the right side caught tiptoe catch by Zach Jones very nice catch by the tight end and now first and ten shotgun set Tony London dropping back he's looking tons of time fires it right side that is caught by Donald Vinson as Tony London is spreading the ball around here you've seen a lot of different names catching balls here but one twelve left to play we're going to try to put one final drive in Ben McLean firing it deep and he's got a man over the middle it's Justin Wagner and Justin Wagner doesn't have the best hands in the country, but he is certainly good at getting open. He finds himself open right there. And now with under a minute to play, Georgia State is in business. Left side caught by Ross Jackson across the 25-yard line for a 19-yard pickup. And a new first down with about 40 seconds to play. Here's a little play action. McLean dropping back, firing left side. Tiptoe catch by Rufus Warren. The, st the standout tight end who has had such a good year this year. Here's a little play action. Once again, looks like the same play to the right side this time. Blake Gardner makes the catch. He'll be brought down short of the goal line so we're gonna have to use up a timeout and now hand off to Blake Gardner up the middle he actually moved to the left a little bit there to avoid as they had packed up the middle a little bit but nonetheless a nice impressive kind of one minute drill type of touchdown right there and we retake the lead going into the fourth or going into the third quarter excuse me 24 to 21 is the score Georgia State looking to clinch a spot in the conference championship and it's going to be whatever team can step up on defense to uh or whatever team can step up on defense is going to be able to win this game someone's got to get a couple stops here as both offenses are just rolling so far no punts in the game but nonetheless here we go tony london dropping back he's got time but now he doesn't he finally gets sacked that's our first sack of the game big big play by joe lockley third and 20 coming up london tons of time he's gonna fire it deep and he's got a man and oh my goodness even when we get them on third and 20 we cannot stop them it is just so frustrating at times playing with these new settings but we're gonna get used to them gregory hogan another new name that we haven't heard from today picks up the deep deep touchdown new mexico state retakes the lead with justin wagner on the ensuing kickoff he doesn't get many kickoff duties but i decided i would try him out because he has good speed and elusiveness antonio huff usually getting the kickoff duties for the really second half of the season but justin wagner Picking it up right there. That's a 70-yard return. We get the ball at about the 25-yard line. McLean avoids a tackler. Cross the first down marker. He gets inside of the 10-yard line. A very nice run by Ben McLean. Not known as a scrambler, but he's getting it done through the ground so far. And Kylie Neal at the middle finds his way just into the end zone for the 9-yard touchdown run. And that will re-give re us the lead, 31-28. to 28. And this is where the game would actually start to get defensive. There had been two punts before that drive. As you can see, the clock is a little bit lower down at this point. And now... Once again, late in the late in the third quarter, after we avoid another, or not avoid another, but we force another three and out, 
that would be a weird play right there. I don't know why I didn't throw that. I was trying to, but it just wouldn't let me. So on third and 22, we actually complete that to old reliable Jordan Giles. There he is again. I think someone in the comment section asked me where he was last episode. He's still here. He just, you know, he's like the fourth receiver, but he has really good ends, and maybe I should use him more, but I really like my receiving core so far this year. Definitely Paul Walker. Ross Jackson's steady. Justin Wagner has some drops, but he's really good at getting open. He's a good deep threat, so... Here we go, we're running some clock off, and the thing I decided in this game was once I realized this was going to be kind of a shootout, I started running the accelerated clock a little bit because I wanted to keep the ball out of the Mexico State's hands. Whenever I start to feel a game getting away from me like that, I always turn the accelerated clock on because I never want to have to keep up with people. I'd rather it be a game in the 20s than a game in the 40s. So I usually turn on the accelerated clock and uh, try to not have it be a shootout. But there's another stop. Our defense really starting to figure out this New Mexico State attack here in the fourth quarter. We get another stop. We're already up by 10, and it's time to run out some clock. Kyler Neal up the middle for the 10-yard gain, and it's going to be a new first down. Now, under five minutes to play. Another handoff to Neal up the middle. He's got space. He's got room, and here he goes across the 25. It's a 24-yard pickup, and he'll get right around to the red zone. You can see 156 yards on the day for Kyler Neal. Another impressive game out of him. Here's Blake Gardner, the backup, getting some work in. He will get actually no gain on the play. That'll set up fourth and 10, and we're going to bring in our field goal unit for the second field goal of the day, and that is going to be up and good. Well, looks still perfect on the year, and now New Mexico State gets the ball back, needing two scores, two touchdowns to try and win this ball game, which is three minutes to play. Marquette Washington on the screenplay picks up eight on the reception. Now third and one later in the drive. Tony London to the right side once again on the screenplay. This time Washington with some more space. He's going to pick up a bigger gain right there. That is 12 yards, and that will give the New Mexico State Lobos a new first down. Now here we go. Tony London left side caught by his man. Marquette Washington once again being very steady throughout the game. Especially out of the backfield, but that's going to set up fourth and three. London needs this to keep his team alive. Left side caught by Cook. Tim Cook, another new name. This New Mexico State team has a fantastic group of wide receivers, as you can tell. A lot of them have, have made big plays today, but Thomas Warren, another guy we haven't heard from with the seven yard pickup, and now Tony London dropping back. He's got time, starts to feel the rush, fires a deep, he's got a man, and it's Wilson. And that is going to be a touchdown for New Mexico State. And just like that, it is a one-possession game as Andrew Wilson picks up the touchdown. And the, with the extra point pending, it could be a six-point game. But 56 seconds to play and two timeouts, so this will require an onside kick from New Mexico State. Here it is, and that is recovered by Technip, one of our tight ends, I believe. Either that is the defensive line. I think he's a tight end. He's like our backup tight end, but on the hands team, he picks it up, and we hold on, we win the game, and we win the belt division of the Sun Belt Conference, we are moving on to the conference championship, with a likely showdown against South Alabama, but before we have that showdown, we have the showdown next week, that is right, the next episode will be our game, week 13 against South Alabama, week 12, Burns and I both have bye weeks, so we will not be making a video for that week, but we will be making one against South Alabama, or I guess for the big game, the rivalry, the biggest rivalry in the series, the biggest rivalry on YouTube or whatever. It's uh, it's a big one. Both of both Burns and I have won one matchup so far in our two matchups. We're back in the Georgia Dome this year, so it could be a good one. Give us a little bit better of a chance. Burns is undefeated right now, looking for a spot in the BCS Bowl and potentially a national championship, and it would be really, really cool to knock him off that. But we'll see what happens. Unless that's going to wrap it up for me. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And just out. Peace.